Hi everyone, if you're excited about cybersecurity and you're aspiring to break into the field, but you're feeling overwhelmed with how to start, particularly if you don't have a background in IT, then you're not alone. I know you'd have a lot of questions. You'll probably be asking, do you need a degree? Do you need to enroll in a bootcamp course? Or which certification should you start with? The reality is the cybersecurity landscape is huge and the roadmaps can be a lot and confusing. And that feeling of being drowned is completely normal. I know this because I went through this journey. I broke into tech without the typical IT or computer science background. I had to figure out my path by testing and refining different roadmaps to land that first row in IT. Since then, I've been fortunate by God's grace. I've had the opportunity to work in several roles, including IT consulting with a big four firm and freelance roles. Through these experiences, I've gained insights into market trends and skill gaps that represent the greatest opportunity for new entrants. So in this video, we'll discuss actionable steps to help you break into the field in the coming year and areas in cybersecurity that offer the greatest chance to land your first role. So let's get started. So the first step, particularly if you don't have an IT background, is to build your foundational knowledge. And the Comptia A plus is a very good option. You'd learn the fundamentals in IT operations, troubleshooting, hardware, and networking. There's a bit of a debate about whether the Comptia A plus is still relevant going into 2026, as it mostly aligns with help desk rules. But in my opinion, you can learn the material and then decide whether to get certified or not. Although this certification is suited more for help desk rules, the knowledge it provides is very fundamental, particularly if you don't have an IT background. The Comptia A plus is very comprehensive and it's made up of two parts. That's the A plus core one and core two. And for for one, you'd learn about mobile devices from hardware setup, accessory options, network setup, troubleshooting. You'd also learn about networking, hardware, virtualization and cloud computing, and hardware and network troubleshooting. And with Core 2, you'd learn about operating systems, including OS installation, Windows tools, file systems. You'd also learn about security, including security measures like encryption, access control, wireless security protocols. You'd learn about malware prevention, software troubleshooting, and operational procedures. The a is very comprehensive and it covers the general areas of IT. After completing a course and probably certifying in a you should be ready to assume roles in an IT environment. Also, there's a higher chance of securing a help desk role as your first job in tech, and then you can pivot into a cybersecurity role in as little as six months. So you can think of the Comptia A plus certification as a ticket that will get your foot into the door in the tech field. Again, let me add that you can decide to learn the Comptia A plus material without certifying because the Comptia A plus exam voucher is not cheap and you have to pay for part one and part two. On the Comptia website, the price of the A plus voucher is $265 in Canada and the US. And you'd notice that you'd have to purchase two exam vouchers to complete the part one and part two of the A-plus certification, and that would cost you around $530. You also have other options, for example, to purchase the voucher with a retake assurance. That would mean that you can retake the exam without having to pay the full amount if you fail the exam on the first attempt. So let's change the location from Canada to the United Kingdom, and let's see the price of the voucher. So we can see here that the A-plus voucher would cost £163 in the UK. We can also see here that in Ghana, the A-plus voucher would cost US$186. US. But if you decide to invest into this certification, it only expands the possibilities in terms of rules that you can secure. In terms of learning resources, Contia has the official materials including the Set Master Perform, which is $819, and the set master learn which is $665. You'd also find the set master practice which is $268. In my opinion these are quite expensive and you can only have access to it for a year. If I were to suggest free learning resources I would say try out Prof Mess's YouTube training course for the Comptia A+. For paid resources, you can try out Jason Dion's Comptia A+, course on Udemy. You'd want to get this course at a cheaper price when it's on sale. Courses on Udemy usually have weekly sales where you can purchase them for under $15. After gaining foundational IT knowledge, you'd want to delve deeper into computer networking. This is an area that a lot of learners find challenging, but cybersecurity is deeply rooted in computer networking. Whether you're aiming for rules in the offensive or defensive side of cybersecurity, you need to understand computer networking. Some of the basic things you should have a fair understanding on includes the TCP IP model, 
and the OSI reference model. You should have a fair idea of the layers of each model and their corresponding protocols and services. You should also understand concepts such as IP addressing and network segmentation. Again, I would highly recommend that you pursue a certification if you can afford to. Two of the most popular computer networking certifications include the CompTIA Network Plus and the Cisco Certified Network Associates. That's the CCNA. Learners have usually found the CompTIA Network Plus to be an easier certification to pursue you and pass as compared to the CCNA. This is largely due to the fact that the CompTIA Network Plus is vendor neutral and provides an introduction to networking concepts. The CCNA on the other hand is an associate exam and would most likely require you to be able to configure Cisco network appliances. The Network Plus would cost you $390 but unlike the A Plus you just have to pay for one exam. Again you may decide to purchase the voucher with a retake assurance which will cost you around $439. Also in the United Kingdom, a single Network Plus voucher would cost you around £240. And in my country Ghana, it would cost you $273. In terms of learning materials, again, I would suggest Prof. Messer's course on YouTube and Jason Dion's Network Plus course on Udemy. After gaining foundational knowledge in computer networking, your next step should be to secure a cybersecurity certification. And again, the CompTIA Security Plus is a popular foundational certification in cybersecurity. You would find it listed along with more advanced certifications such as the CEH, that's a certified ethical hacker, the CISA, or the CISSP. Also, to be able to secure a cybersecurity rule with the US government or the DOD, you would need to be CompTIA Security Plus certified. The CompTIA Security Plus voucher costs around $425 in the US and Canada. And if you decide to purchase it with a retake assurance, that would cost around $474. And in the UK, the Security Plus voucher would cost you £262. Again, in a country like Ghana, it would cost you $298. In addition to cyber security certifications, you would also want to look at cloud computing. A lot of organizations are beginning to host their applications and services on the cloud. So you'd want to stay relevant by acquiring the skills that would help you to secure these systems in the cloud. Some of the foundational cloud certifications you can consider include the AWS Cloud Practitioner, the Azure Fundamentals, that's the AZ900, or even the SC900, that's the Security Compliance and Identity Fundamentals from Microsoft. The SC900 is a foundational certification which is more focused towards cloud security. Another area you may want to pay attention to in your cybersecurity Jenny is the governance, risk, and compliance. That's the GRC. This area of cybersecurity involves drafting of policies, implementing of standards, and compliance with relevant industry regulations. You would want to be familiar with standards such as the ISO 27001, the PCI DSS, or the NIST cybersecurity framework. You may also want to acquire skills in data protection or understand how you can manage data privacy risk. Tools like Microsoft Fairview or OneTrust may come in handy. The the final few steps we will discuss are more of ongoing efforts you should embark on right from the start of your cybersecurity journey. These include building your resume, putting together your portfolio and projects, and constantly applying for jobs. When it comes to projects that you'd want to include in your portfolio, you'd want to be as simple as possible. You can install virtual machines using VirtualBox and create simple home lab projects. For example, you can create a simple home lab project that is aligned with IT support or help desk. In this instance, you may decide to install Windows Server 2022 Evaluation Copy and install Active Directory Domain Services and show how a simple password reset is done. This is a very common function of an IT support or help desk role. And demonstrating that you understand how this is performed puts you in a good position for your first role in IT. You can install VirtualBox by visiting the VirtualBox website, which is virtualbox.org forward slash wiki forward slash downloads. And when it comes to installation, you have a number of options you can install for Windows host, Mac OS, Linux distributions, and Solaris. So from the website, you can download the appropriate installation package and install on your personal computer. Once you install VirtualBox, you can then proceed to install the various virtual machines like the Windows Server Evaluation Copy. To find an evaluation copy of Windows Server, you can type in your search engine Microsoft Evaluation Center and then find the Microsoft Evaluation Center site. In the Evaluation Center, you'd have access to some of the most recent Microsoft operating systems. And in here, you'd want to choose Windows Server 2025, which is the latest release. 
in here you'd want to read the overview look at how to get started and you'd find that you'd have three options you can try it on azure you can also download the iso file and you also have the option to download the virtual hard disk and with the vhd you'd be able to install it as a pre-configured virtual machine you would however want to know that the evaluation copy is valid for 180 days after which you'd have to convert to a retail product or reinstall the evaluation copy another simple project you may decide to document is the application of firewall rules using a tool such as pfSense which is a free firewall you can download and install as a virtual machine so this is how my personal virtual box setup looks like. I have a Kali Linux virtual machine. I have the PSSense firewall. I have the Windows Server 2022 evaluation copy. I have the Windows 10 and the Linux Ubuntu virtual machine. From here, I can network these virtual machines and create a home lab project. I can also use these to apply the commands that I've learned for Windows and Linux through my journey from Comtia A+, through Network+, to security plus for example let's launch the windows server 2022 version and see how it works so we are currently in the windows server 2022 virtual machine so we would have to unlock it enter the password and sign in so if you look beneath you can see that it's a windows server 2022 evaluation copy this is even expired and i'll have to reinstall so with this, you can install Windows Active Directory. For example, you can click Add Rules and Features. You can click on Next. You can click on Next. You can click on the server. And you can click on the features you'd want to install. So as you can see here, you can see Active Directory Domain Services. In this video, we won't delve into Active Directory Domain Services. But if you're interested in seeing a walkthrough in future videos, kindly leave a comment and we'll do that. Ideally, you'd want to publish your projects on LinkedIn or GitHub and include them as links in your resume. This makes it easy for recruiters to verify that indeed you can apply the skills that you've learned in cybersecurity. I truly hope this video gave you the clarity and confidence you need to start your cybersecurity journey. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if there's anything I may have missed or you need more clarity on, please don't hesitate to drop a comment and we'll do well to respond. Thank you for watching.